Hello everyone. Maybe one year ago I purchased Anycubic Cobra Max 3D printer shown over here. Due to the fact that I was moving and due to some other obligations, I was not able to extensively use this 3D printer. I purchased this 3D printer mainly because it has a huge 3D printing area and due to the fact that I was planning to 3D print parts for mobile robots, drones and robotic manipulators. Also, this is a very low cost 3D printer. Since I plan to 3D print a mobile robotics platform, I plan to extensively use this 3D printer in the near future. In this video, I perform a 3D printing test. I plan to 3D print a part that should be attached to the main shaft of this rotary encoder. On one end of my part, I should have a hole in which this main shaft of the rotary encoder should be placed. And the shape of the hole should match the shape of the shaft. Then, the other side of the part should be supported by this bearing and this bearing mount. Here is a 3D model of the part that I want to 3D print. This hole over here will be used to mount the main shaft of the rotary encoder. On the other hand, this side over here should fit the opening of my bearing. Another thing to notice over here is that this is not a perfect circle. You can see a straight line over here. I introduced this straight line since I want to match this hole to the shape of my shaft of the rotary encoder. Another important thing to observe is that I'm using free cat. FreeCAD is a completely free 3D CAD modeling software. You can freely download it and use it. Also, if you are familiar with Fusion 360 or with AutoCAD or even with SolidWorks, you will not have problems using this software. Also, if you are completely new to 3D modeling, this software is very easy to use. I strongly believe in open source and free software and consequently that's why I'm using FreeCAD. To 3D print this part you first need to export this model as an STL file. To do that you need to click over here on body to select everything then click on file and click on export. And over here you need to give the name to your file. I will call it part test 223 and make sure that you save the file as the STL file and click on save. Next, you need to open the STL file from a special software. This special software is actually called the slicing software. The slicing software will load the STL file and it will generate a code for the 3D printer. That is, it will generate instructions for the stepper motors of the 3D printer and by following these instructions, the 3D printer will actually 3D print this part. In my case, I'm using this software. It's called Ultimaker Cura. And I'm using this version, 4.2.1. This is a completely free and open source slicing software. Let's start this program. Anycubic Cobra Max recommends its users to use this software. And here it is. Now, let's open our STL file. Here it is. The first thing that you need to observe over here is that the orientation of this object is not appropriate. It's not a good idea to 3D print the object in this orientation. This is because you have an empty space over here and the 3D printer actually needs to 3D print the support over here. 
Much better orientation is to rotate this part such that this surface is touching the plate of the 3D printer. We can do it relatively easy. So click on the object and click on rotate. And over here you can choose the rotation axis. Let's do this. Now let's keep on rotating. Okay, and here it is. Perfect. Before we can actually generate a sliced file with all the paths and instructions for the motors of the 3D printer, it's very important to properly adjust the print settings. Over here, click on Basics. There are several critical settings that we need to adjust. First, we need to adjust the infill. So click on infill over here and I will use 50% as an infill. Then, the infill pattern can be, for example, lines, triangles, and other types of shapes. I will use triangles. Next, expand the support setting. In this case, we actually don't need support. This is because we rotated our part. However, it's not a bad idea to generate the support. Next, we need to adjust this very important option, Build Plate Adhesion. And over here you have several options. You need an initial layer or even several layers to make sure that the part is properly attached to the surface and to make sure that the part is printed across the flat surface. Over here you have several options. I usually use Brim or Raft. Let's see what is a brim and what is a raft. So, for example, if you click on brim and if you click on slice, you will see what's actually happening. Now, you can click on preview to see. Here is the initial layer. It's a brim. Now, let's change this to raft and click on slice. And let's see the layer. And over here we can see that we have an initial raft on top of which our part will be 3D printed. I will select this option, raft. You can also select more advanced options by clicking on custom selection and over here you can actually have more options. For example, for the raft, you can select margin, smoothing, gap, etc. However, let's stick to the basic options. Okay. The next step is to save the model to a file. In my case, I will save the file to a micro SD card. I will save the model to the micro SD card mainly because the 3D printer accepts the micro SD card. Of course, the 3D printer can also be connected by using a USB port to your computer and then you can automatically transfer the model to the 3D printer by using USB. However, I will be using the micro SD card. So plug in the micro SD card adapter to your computer and wait a while. Close this window and click here save to removable drive. And you will see this menu, save to removal drive as, and here's the name of the file. And that's it. It's always a good idea to double check that the file is saved properly. So plug in the micro SD adapter and you should see your file over here. Perfect. To start the 3D printing process, you need to insert the micro SD card containing the sliced file into the micro SD card reader of your 3D printer. After that, over here you need to click on print, then you need to select the file. Once I selected the file, the file will become red, and then you need to click on print. Over here you need to click on settings to make final few adjustments. First of all, 
the bed temperature should be around 60. The bed temp temperature is the temperature of the plate. And over here, you can adjust the 3D printing temperature. According to the PLA document properties, the temperature should be 210. However, in your case, this temperature might be different. You need to look into the specification of your PLA material. And that's it. Click on OK. The 3D printing process will not start until the 3D printing temperature reaches the target value of 210 and until the bed temperature reaches the target value of 60. So you need to be patient. After the target temperatures are reached, the 3D printing process will start. Currently, the raft is being 3D printed. This is the first layer of the raft after approximately 8 minutes of 3D printing time. You can already see an outline of the raft. This is our raft after approximately 20 minutes. This is the raft after approximately 45 minutes. This is a 3D printing progress after 1 hour and 10 minutes. This is a 3D printing progress after approximately 2 hours of printing time. You can see the layers over here. And you can see the fill-in. This is the other side of the part after approximately 2 hours of 3D printing time. This is a 3D printing progress after approximately 2 hours and 30 minutes. You can see the layers over here. And you can see the infill pattern. Looks very nice. This is the other side. This is a 3D printing progress after approximately 3 hours of 3D printing time. You can see the layers over here, how they are printed, and from this side. This is a 3D printing progress after approximately 3 hours and 20 minutes. You can see that the hole has supports. And the other side is almost 3D printed. This is a 3D printing progress after approximately 3 hours and 37 minutes.
After approximately 3 hours and 40 minutes, the process is completed. And here's our part. Here's the part from another angle. And now I will remove the part from the 3D printing plate. Good, it's very easy to remove the part. Okay, perfect. So let's see. Okay, so this is the raft. And then let's see what's happening over here. You can actually see the part. I hope that the, this camera can properly zoom in the part like this, maybe. Okay, so this is a good angle. Okay, then let's see this part over here. Let's hope that this camera can zoom in properly. Probably I need to put it on a white surface so I, you can see it much better. Here's a better view of the part. You can see these supports here for this hole. We can remove these supports and let's now rotate everything. Of course we can improve this surface by changing the 3D printing parameters, however this is not bad actually. You can see that this surface is nicely flat.